Hey, this is Tim Pierce. Last week I did something really fun that I haven't done in a long time. I went to a music store and went amp shopping. The place we went is called LA Vintage Gear. It's in Burbank, California, owned by Cliff Jones. I met Cliff in the 90s when he was a staff engineer at the Village Recorder. It's a great shop, very vibey. They have a lot of really awesome builders, a lot of boutique companies, and I tried 10 amps. I didn't buy anything, but it was awesome and I learned a lot. So here's a quick tour through 10 amplifiers. All sounded great. We're joined by our young friend from across the pond, Aiden Scrivens, and later for a few minutes, Pete Thorne. Click the link below if you want to check out the longer version of this in the masterclass. So Aiden, what is this? This is the Benson Monarch Reverb Combo. So you can see right next to the one that you have right there, we have it in a head and cab, but we're running through the combo at the moment, which comes with the reverb built in. So it's just like the tall bird head, but it's one knob, simple as you like, turn it up, and get everything you need. It's simple, got volume, tone, and this really cool British to American voicing switch. That's the treble pickup. It sounds really full. And when I when I dump my microamp in front of it, it takes it really well. I like that kind of clean but articulate, but a little bit of grind. Yeah, it's something that I've heard you talk about when you say it, how it reads as clean, but yeah. it has that compression yeah. and that little bit of extra sustain to it. It's on the American voice. Okay. That's a little of the amp reverb, my reverb's off, so that's cool. Exactly, and then I'm going to take a trip across the pond right here with the British setting. Tightened up the bottom end, added a, a little more grit on the top yeah, end. Yeah, yeah. A little more it's... boxy, right? And it sounds like a smaller amp in a way, but a hotter amp. So nice. It's like they like brought everything from down here to up here. Right. Bit. That amp reminded me of my old Filmo sound with the one tone knob and the one volume knob. I love combo amps because the speaker is shaking the amplifier really a lot. You know, they're, they're right next to each other. And I swear I can hear the amplifier vibrating inside the box. It's, it makes it alive somehow. Where are these made? These are That's made by Chris Spencer himself and Portland, Oregon. I mean, I, it makes me want to do a gig. Have it right behind me, or have two right. of them right behind me. Right, and the crazy thing is these cabs are light too. Oh, cool. Really easy to lift, but they sound huge. Is that a 212? Yeah, yeah, 212. Awesome. So, let's hear this one. You mess with the tone. Which means just turning it up. <laughs> narcotic kind of lead tone. Classic. Very cool. And it's cool because it's pretty nice to play actually because it's four 6v6s coming out to a total of 30 watts. So it kind of has a little bit of that spongier feel of those, you know, a little bit tweedier, a little bit sweeter. But still nice and full bodied. I kind of can't, can't believe how different it sounds in it. They're both great, but they're so different. Yeah. You can still hear every note with the distortion, it's no right. problem. Yeah. So the Benson Camaro uh, was a really nice sounding amp too. The thing I like most about it though is the way it looks. Something about that tall, skinny profile. It reminds me of like the old Rickenbacker amps that I would see behind the Beatles combined with Vox amps. It just made me want to join a band right now and be playing through that amp. Oh, I'd need two or three of them to, I think, get the right volume. <laughs> right next to a drummer. And it gets loud. I mean, it's a 75 watt EL34 monster through 212s. It can go. Louder yeah. and louder, you've got your master volume here. Okay. And it is very, very martially. That sag on a low note, I just love that. 
and then you push it with some pedals as well, and it just gets so juicy. <laughs> Yeah, this is what I'm so familiar with, the closed back cabinet, the martial tone. Mm -hmm. I really, you know, this is what I gravitate towards. <laughs> nicely. Hear that like chirp and that squawk? I love that. It's still got that sort of tightness, yeah. but it's just yeah. beefy. Somewhere around 1975 or 1976, I was 16 or 17, and I got my first good amp. It was a 50 watt long box Marshall. So it was the, sh the little amp in a long box, which I thought was really cool, because then it, it sat flush with the, a cabinet. It transformed my playing. I remember listening back to a cassette tape. The first night I got it, we were playing at a high school dance, and I had all this warm, beautiful sustain with, with like harmonics. It l literally elevated my playing. So this family of British amplifiers and the boutique amp makers that uh, make amps in this style, I'll always gravitate towards those, just, just because of the, I think that experience I had that one night when I got my first Marshall. This is different. It's more uh, open. I mean, it's not as tight, which is actually cool. Everything kind of spreads and the bottom end spreads open. Really, it kind of sounds like the oldest amp so far, really. Now you say this is Doyle Bramble's amp? Yeah, yeah, we just, uh, it's on consignment from him. He had it on tour for a couple months. This is a 50 watt, like a super bass. Um, yeah. <laughs> clarity to it too. That's cool. Yeah. Roy Blankenship is kind of a legend here in LA, uh, but more than that, he's been a really good friend to all of us guitar players. Uh, we've all taken him our amps to have them modified and or upgraded, and he does really great work, and he's a really warm person. Uh, I, I'm, glad I, I'm glad I know him. It was great playing through this amp, uh, a British style plexi all the way. <laughs> So what do we got here? This is the Morgan Tweed 20. So this was designed in collaboration with Rusty Anderson. Wow. Um, and it's pretty much what it says on the tin. You know, you have a simple uh, tone and volume and the sort of bright, this, this switch is like a bright and dark, but it's basically like going into the normal channel or the bright channel. Okay. Yeah, flip the switch for me. They both sound good, but I like the bright one. Right, yeah. A little bit more gain, I think, as yeah. well. Like a little bit more grind. Yeah, really 
this sounds like a small app. You know, my Divided by 13 that I love was designed by Rusty, so I have to take a good hard look at this. Very chimey and clear, but also small sounding in a good way. I mean, it's not big sounding, which is great. <laughs> It takes pedals well. It doesn't sound small anymore, but it does sound compact. You know, the bottom end sounds compact. pedals back to the original sound I like it because it, it kind of sounds like it's right right here in your face right it's good what happens if you turn the volume up all the way this is what happens still holds its shape like the blanket chip the bottom end starts to explode and that's nice unless you don't want it in a band, man. <laughs> <laughs> I really like this Morgan. Uh, it has a small, compact sound, and I was reminded that a lot of the big, iconic guitar sounds on a lot of the records I listened to were done with tiny combo amps, and I always had the impression it was just huge stacks of Marshalls, but it's often tiny combo amps. Uh, Rusty and Frederick developed the, uh, my favorite Divided by 13, the RSA 23, so um, my, I knew this one would be good also. So what's this guy? This guy is a Joe Morgan designed amp. Uh, funnily enough, it's in you know the old case with box on the front. Yeah, it's it actually says JMI on the top, which at the time stands for Joe Morgan Industries. Going through a 212? Yes, okay. Pine Cab 212. Yeah. <laughs> Feeding back and right. creating a lot of energy through the guitar. <laughs> tight and bright and right. kind of voiced up here. Yeah, and we have it going fairly loud at the moment, but but you know, having that master volume is really nice on it because I've had times playing where a Vox has been backlined and I haven't been able to get that sound yeah. that I love. You can't open it to the sweet spot. It's louder than conversational volume, so that's cool. That's with no pedals, here go the pedals. We got here we got another Morgan is this a 112 yes this is a 112 cab um, this is the Morgan PR 12 so basically it's based on the Princeton circuit but kind of everything 12 so it's 12 watts it's designed around using a 12 inch speaker instead oh. of the 10 okay and built-in reverb oh that's sweet Yeah, 
once again, it has that small amp distortion that mm -hmm. should really focus right in your face. <laughs> really really want to set it clean and play sweet clean stuff yeah. up. It's great when an internal reverb hits the amp really and it kind of melts in with the distortion. Right. I think that's what I would do. I would set it to this beautiful clean sound and just use pedals. Those 12 watts into that perfect spot to hit with something. Yeah. Yeah, just leave it set where it's best and then use your favorite pedals. Yeah. Just... This one too. <laughs> I had never played through a Morgan before and I really liked them. Uh, I have friends who use them all the time so I knew they were good. I really ended up liking that 12. My, my instinct was to play clean with a little bit of reverb and then if I needed distortion to step on a pedal and then it would kind of explode. I really I really liked it. So what is what wattage was this one? That was the 20 watt. And this is the 45. Right. Yeah. This is a three-dimensionality. I mean, that would speak in a band situation. That would really speak. That's really good. Look at the way everything rings together. say about this except that I really like the way it sounds. It seems like all of his choices, these these indents are all really good. They're all tasteful. Todd Sharp was always one of the hottest guitar players in LA, and he was an artist's guitar player and a songwriter's guitar player. And I remember hearing, the first time I heard a recording he did, I was blown away by his tones and his feel and his touch. And so, no wonder this amp's really good. It has so much definition and so much size. I, re I really loved the 40. I had texted Pete Thorne earlier. He finally made it by. He was super busy that day. And he was able to help me out with the Metropolis and the Two Rock Combo. And we kind of decided that the Metropolis is the ultimate Marshall and the Two Rock's kind of the ultimate Fender. Both great amps. So this is just Marshall. Oh, this is just a Marshall amp. Right? Pretty much, yeah. KT66, it's like a yeah. J45 on one yeah. channel, 45100 on the other. Yeah. Pete, you just got a new Marshall, a new vintage Marshall. A 72, yeah, yeah, that's true. Love it? Yeah, uh, yeah, it's great. It has a really aggressive bright cap in it, so it really sounds good like at 7 and above. <laughs> wow, okay. I mean, this is 
the sound that I, I it's like in my DNA. You ready? Superplex thing? Yeah. That's yeah. called, yeah. 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 You wanna try it? Yeah, sure. <laughs> So right now you're like a JTM 45 boosted oh. with a kind of mid humpy kind of thing going on. Okay. And then if you step on that mode switch right here, you get a 45 100. Oh. running the whole time. Yeah. It kind of has its own EQ section, so it, it, right now it's like treble and bass rolled off, so it kind of pronounces those mids. Uh, but it's a little bit of extra gain, kind of whatever you want. What's this? So this is the Two Rock traditional clean 40-20 combo. So basically it's a half power switch on the back, that's uh -huh. where it gets the 40-20 from. It's 40 watts at full power, which is what you're at now. And then also you can switch it switch down to 20 watts. It's basically, Two Rock got asked for so long ever since they did that John Mayer signature, please make the John Mayer signature again. Um, this is, without it being the same thing, this is very much the same design. Okay. So I really should have a Strat, I'm not gonna, but... <laughs> <laughs> the genesis of that kind of design was that it was their flagship model, but stripped down so it didn't have that extra gain channel. It was a pedal platform amp. Okay. Really nice, pristine, clean. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 